Am I the asshole for going on a hiking trip with my pregnant wife? Over the weekend, my wife and I went on a hiking trip with some of my friends. We've always been active people, but it kind of seems like my wife, who is six months pregnant, has sort of turned into a couch potato in recent weeks. It's, it's caused her to gain a bit of weight and become huh. moody. I figured some exercise would be good for her and for me. <laughs> well, I thought I picked a pretty easy hike. It's a trail that's close to our house and not that long, about three miles out and back. But it can be a bit steep in places. She's done it before, so it couldn't have been too much of a surprise. What? We were about a third of the way done when my wife started huffing and puffing. Mm -hmm. My friend slowed down to accommodate her, so mm -hmm. I decided to slow down too. Okay. After half a mile of the huffing and puffing, my wife looked pretty bad. She got real pale and I was hunched over on one and was hunched over on one side of the trail. I was sort of shocked to see her in the state. She had let herself go recently, but I didn't think she would lose her fitness this quickly. However, a few minutes later, she actually started to throw up, and it was at this point that we all decided to head back. I'm fully aware that she's going to deliver a baby in three months, but I can't help but <laughs> think that she wouldn't have embarrassed me in front of my friends if she had kept her exercise routine. Yeah. We both ate the same food at breakfast, oh. and I never got sick. Got back to the parking lot and I apologized for my wife's behavior to my friends. I thought I was out of earshot, but apparently my wife heard the whole thing. When I got back to the car, she went nuts. She told me I was an, quote, idiot. She told me I was an, quote, idiot for thinking she could keep up at our normal pace and that I was a, quote, grade A asshole for insinuating that my wife had thrown up on purpose. I listened to her rant at me before politely asking if she thought she would have felt so sick if she hadn't been a couch potato recently, but she refused to engage with me at all. I wanted Good. it to dawn on her that she was at least partially to blame for this, but she refused to take any responsibility. This happened on Saturday, and even today has been really tense. It's as if she's holding a grudge against me, and I don't know how to get her to stop. She's making me sad with this horrible treatment. Oh. Stories talking about how I took a flight to pop up on my man. I'm not the one. You know I gotta give y'all a quick backstory. So girl, at this time, my boyfriend and I were in a long distance relationship. He was living in Dallas and I was living in Virginia. This was probably like two weeks before his birthday. And I had already planned to take him to Aspen, Colorado for his birthday. Girl, the flights were already booked. The hotel was already booked. Excursions already booked. Maybe the trip was solidified. I was taking my bae out of town, all expense paid. <laughs> So girl, I'm thinking we're good. I got a trip planned for my man in two weeks. It's his birthday. Girl, life's great. As we got closer to his birthday, he started acting funny. He was being dry. He was being snappy. Like, what is wrong with you? So I was at work and I decided to go in the bathroom and call him to confront him about this attitude that he's been having. Hello? What is wrong with you? You've been dry sending me one word responses. You've been snappy. Stop playing with me before I cancel everything for your birthday and I'm not playing. He all like... So go ahead and cancel it then. Go ahead and cancel it. Girl, I banged it on him and started crying. I was sad. <laughs> Girl, and because of my past trauma, I immediately started thinking, this nigga cheating on me. Because why else would you just be acting funny towards me for no reason? You think I'm boo boo the fool, nigga? So girl, it was time for me to conjure up a plan. So girl, I just got finished crying. But for more of a dramatic effect, I added some water under my eyes like I was bawling. And I went back out to my manager and was like, <laughs> I'm having a family emergency. I need to go home right away. <laughs> Girl, I had to do what needed to be done to get out of there. So my manager lets me leave. And as soon as I get home, baby, I'm on American Airlines app trying to book the next thing smoking. I knew I needed to get to Dallas the same day to see what was going on and possibly catch him in the act. So American Airlines had a flight that would get me to Dallas same day at 5 p.m. Girl, I packed my bags for this. We gotta go. So I raced to the airport. And when I got there, I text him to apologize. A little reverse psychology to get him right where I wanted him. So I was being super sweet and apologized and I told him I was going to order him a little snack from Chick-fil-A around hmm, 5 p.m. So I had to use the Chick-fil-A delivery tactic because he lived in a gated apartment building and if he didn't open the gate, I can't get in. So I knew if I texted him and said, let the delivery person in, he was going to open the gate and I'm the delivery person. So I finally land in Dallas. Maybe I'm scared, but I couldn't fold. So I had my Uber driver make a stop at Chick-fil-A so I can get the food, but baby, now it's time to go to the apartment. Ooh. So I text him and said, the delivery person is there, open the gate. <laughs> so he opens the gate and I went right up to his unit. Baby, my knees started buckling. Cause what if I really see something I don't want to see? I lied to y'all not. As I started to knock on the door, he was already opening the door. 
Girl, this man jumped like, what the freak? This man literally grabbed me, gave me the tightest hug and told me, you don't understand how much I needed you to be here. So I immediately knew that this had nothing to do with cheating. Something was really wrong. So we sit down, eat and talk and he finally started to explain what has been wrong with him. So he explained to me that every year around his birthday, he gets into a funk because he has goals that he has to hit before he turns a new age. Yes, that man is so goal driven, it's crazy. And I didn't know that because this was our first year in the relationship. He also told me that he applied for a promotion at work and he was having anxiety about whether or not he was gonna get it. Because he was the youngest on his team, he was only 23 at the time and he had the least amount of experience. Girl, I told him next time, babe, you need to communicate that. Like, I wanna be there for you in these times in your life. That's what I'm here for. I'm your biggest cheerleader, nigga. I prayed so hard for that man that he got that position. I just wanted him to be at peace for his birthday. So the following week, it was time to go to Aspen. And I lied to y'all not. The morning of his 24th birthday in Aspen, Colorado, his manager called him and told him he got the promotion and told him what his new salary was going to be. <laughs> You cannot tell me my goal ain't real. My man got a promotion, more money, it's his birthday, we on a trip, and we ended up working on our communication. Sounds like a win-win situation to me. Thank Having a really wide age gap between you and your younger sibling is weird because you're both completely different people. You were both raised by completely different sets of parents, essentially. For example, I was raised by two broke 20-year-olds, okay? And I know a lot of dark family secrets because I lived them. And also my parents told me because when I was six and they were brand new parents, they were like, surely this is not a real human who will remember everything in 20 years. But I do, and I talk about it incessantly. So when my youngest sister was born, they were like, we should probably keep some secrets from this one. My sister is being raised by a couple of retired globetrotters who eat organic, ethically sourced ground beef. She'll come home from vacations and she'll say, yeah, it was a really cool vacation, but the hotel we stayed at wasn't nearly as cool as the one we stayed at in New York last month. And I'm like, when I was your age, we went on vacation to my aunt's house in Yakima and I had to sleep in a cupboard. They put me in a cupboard in an RV because there was nowhere else for me to sleep. My giant uncle picked me up, shoved me in the cupboard, and then the next day I was like, please, can I sleep in the house? Because I had to pee so bad and I couldn't get down out of the cupboard, but I was also scared of falling asleep because I didn't want to roll out of the cupboard and get hurt. And they went, fine, you can sleep beneath the dining room table. And I slept on that linoleum and I was grateful. And I love my sister. Sometimes she asks me things like, do you think we'd be friends in real life if we weren't sisters? And I say, yes, of course. But on the inside, I'm like, no way. You only know two Britney Spears songs. That is offensive to Britney Spears songs not even any of the new ones from after you were born I am 900% positive that my neighbors got murdered and my landlord is gaslighting me um so like if you are a true crime person or the, the, the police let me know because I'll give you all the facts and like this is why I think it also I told my mom this I like called my mom this morning I was like hey I think my neighbors are murdered and she was like well don't tell people that because they'll think you did it and I'm like girl I had like dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets for breakfast today I look like, it wasn't me no one's no one's gonna think it was me so don't think it was me it, it, it wasn't it, it's obviously not me but like don't please don't think it's me so okay whatever I have been living at this apartment for for two years not no not an issue in the world so last year there was like a family that that moved in next door and so they were there for like about a month before I ever like ran into them. And when I ran in, the mom introduced me and she was like, hi, nice to meet you. We're the neighbors. And I was like, hi, nice to meet you. And then she was like, quick question though. Can you hear anything from our apartment in your apartment? And like, they had like a child who was like crying. So I didn't want them to feel self-conscious about that. So I was like, no, I, 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 I can't. So she was like, okay, good. And at the time I was like, that's kind of weird, but whatever. So anyways, move over to this summer. I'm like sitting in my apartment and I smell something like molding, something like decaying. And I was like, girl, you need to take out your trash. That is disgusting. So I take out my trash, smell still there. So like, you should probably like wash that trash can. Like there, there must be something on there. So I go completely wash the trash can, smell still there. Clean my apartment with like a toothbrush, top to bottom. It is getting, the smell is getting worse. So I'm like freaking out. And then like a week later, I'm like sitting having lunch and I see like four or five flies like in my apartment. I've been here for a year and I've seen maybe one fly ever. So I am like, oh, that's kind of gross. I get a little fly spotter. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Bye guys. I, so I killed the flies, but I didn't kill my neighbor. Obviously I didn't kill my neighbors, but like, ugh. so I wake up the next day and there's like 
a dozen flies in my apartment and I'm like, oh, I hate this. This is disgusting. So I get this like fly zapper that like, it's like an electronic fly zapper. And so I like set it outside or in my apartment and like that thing is like working for its pay. Like right was due, it's like boom, 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 boom. It's, like zooming and zapping all those flies. I'm like, yes, girl, do the thing. Um, and so I go to bed, wake up the next day. There's like two to three dozen flies in my apartment. So at this point I'm like, so I text my landlord and I'm like, hey girl, <laughs> there's a lot of flies in my apartment. I'm kind of worried. And she goes, well, it's LA. Flies are super normal. And I'm like, yeah, like maybe one or two, but there's like dozens of them. And she goes, yeah, I don't think it's a huge issue. So at this point I'm like going insane. Like it is, it is disgusting. So I'm going out of town and I get this like little formula that you can put in your apartment that just like, it's like, it smells bad and it attracts flies. So I put it in my apartment for like two days and I come back it is filled to the brim with dead flies. And I'm like, mm, I'm not cut out for this. Like I'm a chicken nugget girl. Like I dino chicken nuggets. Like that is the weakest form of chicken nugget. Like this is not my forte. So I'm like throwing it out. And like, while I'm throwing it out, I'm walking by the apartment building and I see that on the windowsill, there are hundreds of dead flies on the windowsill, body to body, the little flies. And then there were like live flies like that were banging across the window. Cause they were like trying to escape the murder house. I didn't know it at the time. So, I like Google, I'm like, how do flies transport? And they transport for vents. So I'm like, this smell and these flies are for sure coming from that apartment. But like, I'm not a snitch. Mama didn't raise no snitch. I'm not gonna say shit. So I'm like sitting there and be like, well, I hope they figure that out. Like, and like, if that's like their living condition. If they're like, okay, living with like flies, like what, who am I, what am I supposed to say? So I don't really think anything of it. And then I like go on a little like hot girl walk, do my little meditation. I'm feeling real good about myself. And then I come back to my apartment and there are three mattresses covered, soaked, drenched in blood. And like, I'm not like a, like a, like a doctor, like a, like a like ophthalmologist or like a, I don't know who's, who's like a blood doctor, a hemoglobinist. That's not it. I don't know. So like, I'm, I'm that's, I don't do that. You know, I'm like, so I, I was like, I don't know, like if, if I, lost that amount of blood, I'd probably be dead or I would be in the ER with a doctor stitching a leg back to me or like a limb or something. Like something something would be missing from my body if that amount of blood was left no longer inside of me. So I text my landlord again and I'm like, hey girl, <laughs> it's me again. So sorry for being super annoying. But um, is everything okay with the building? There's three mattresses covered in blood outside and I'm a little concerned. And she goes, oh yeah, we're just cleaning out a vacant unit. And I'm like, oh, what unit? And she lists the, like, the unit next to me. I'm like, hmm, that's kind of weird. And she was, but I was like, yeah, but again, it's like, it's a lot of blood. And she was like, yeah, well, they had, they had painted the apartment red, so it's paint. I've seen red paint and I've seen blood. It wasn't red paint. So, Yeah. And like, they've like come and they're like excavating it. They're like taking out the carpets. Like it is, it is. And like the thing is, she was like, I don't know what to do at this point. Like there's not a crime scene. I like was like, oh, maybe like, let me report it. My mom's like freaking me out being like, they'll think you murdered them. But I like obviously didn't. Cause I like, like, I don't know. I like put dino chicken nuggets in an air fryer. That's not what murderers do. Like it's, like, it's not me. I didn't do it. Like, but like someone, something happened and like they, they ran away. So like no one, like no one's seen them. They just like stopped paying rent. And then the landlord I think came to like check in on them cause they hadn't paid rent and there was no one there. So I don't know what happened. I never saw them. I, I don't know. But yeah, if you're like the police, a true crime expert, or just you want to solve a murder, or if there's like something like reassuring that I'm not thinking about, that's like something like maybe cute and wholesome, that would also be like really nice to hear. Um, Cause I am losing my mind. When I was five years old, my neighbor took me and my siblings and a couple of the other neighbor kids to an activity that was going on at the church. We were all Mormon at the time. When we got back, all of the kids got out of the truck and she sees us walk around front to go into the house. So she starts backing out. It turns out I wasn't walking with the kids around the front of the truck. I had actually gone around the back of the truck. So as she went to back out, she knocks me over and runs over my stomach. The truck tire went over me completely and then she stops, I pass out,
But I wake up a few moments later and I remember my neighbor was there and I was laying on the ground because they left me on the ground until the ambulance got there. And he was like, are you cold? And I was like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) mm-hmm. And then they put a blanket on me and I pass out again. When I wake up next, I'm in an ambulance on the stretcher and then we go to a helicopter because I have to be put in a helicopter to get to some hospital. At the helicopter, they say, do you want your mom to go with you or your dad? And I said, I want my mom. And then they said, well, your dad's going to go with you. And I start crying. I don't understand why they gave me the option if I didn't actually have the option. Once we got to the hospital, there was really nothing for them to do. I I assume that they did x-rays, but there was actually not a thing wrong with me. (laughs) I just had some tread like bruised into my skin and it was there for weeks (laughs) my dad said that it was actually kind of funny when he got me dressed and and seeing like the dread marks bruised into my belly (laughs) because the truck had literally ran over my little body (laughs) i i do remember that the neighbor lady she came over with a tray of cookies not too long after that i assume they were apology cookies i found out later that i was not the first kid that she had hit before i think she hit someone on the sidewalk. I don't know the full story there, but that wasn't the last time I got hit by a truck. The second time that I got hit by a truck was way funnier than the first time because I was in seventh grade and I had super short hair and I love to do crazy hairdos. So this day I decided to put little ponytails all around my head. They were an inch tall. They stuck straight up. And then I was like, oh, I better put on a hoodie. So I put on a dark blue hoodie. I put the hood up. The reason why is because normally when I did crazy hair, I didn't like how people in their cars would stare at me when I was walking to school. So this was the way I fixed that. So I'm walking to school. I'm almost there. I'm at the last intersection and it's really crowded because everyone has to go through it to get to school. In fact, there are a couple of school buses waiting at the light full of my peers when I'm standing there waiting across. By the way, it's still dark outside. It's early enough that it's kind of blue outside. But the light eventually says go, so I start to walk and a car turns left on a red through the crosswalk. It almost hits me and I stop and I'm like, oh my God, I almost got hit by a car. In that exact moment, a truck comes from behind me, slams into me and I go flying through the intersection. I land on the road and immediately I'm like, damn it. I just got hit by a truck like that. This sucks. And then I look up, there's a huge row of cars waiting to go on the green light. And I'm like, oh my God, they're going to run me over. I better scream so they know that I'm down. So I scream and then I stand up and I finish crossing the road. The guy who hit me is out of his truck and he's freaking out. And I'm like, I'm just going to go to school. I'm fine. Like I can see school from where we're at right now. It's a short walk. And at the same time, I'm thinking, do I go to the nurse when I get there? Because I feel like they're not going to believe me that I got hit by a truck. But he won't let me go to school anyways. He makes me sit down and wait for the paramedics. When the paramedics get there, they check me over. They're like, are you okay? I take off my hood. They laugh at me. They start laughing at the little big deals all around my head. And I'm so embarrassed. I just put my hood back up and I'm like, I'm fine. The only thing wrong with me is I had road rash on my leg from sliding across the asphalt. Then the police come and they call my dad. And they're like, are you guys going to take her to the hospital? Or should we put her in the ambulance? And we're like, we don't have health insurance. We're not doing that. You're funny, sir. But he does walk me over to the parking lot that's just behind where I got hit. And the truck is sitting there. He says, I've got to show you something. He walks me around to the front of the truck and there is a body size dent in the front of it. I was I was like 100 pounds in seventh grade, but I really made my mark. I got to give myself credit for that. Later in the day, we did end up stopping by urgent care just to do like another check over and make sure things were good. And again, I'm totally fine. I was fine besides the road rash. You know who wasn't fine? All those kids on the school bus who watched their peer get slammed into by a truck because it was a Friday. So I don't show up to school that day. Then they don't see me through the weekend and everyone is spreading rumors that I am paralyzed, that I've passed away. People come to my house all weekend long with cookies and cards. Like my entire home ec class wrote get well cards despite the fact I'm like, totally fine. The church comes to my door. They say, God saved you. He must have a special plan for you. And I was like, if the special plan is to keep getting hit by trucks, I don't like it. I don't like the plan. I found out that my fiance was cheating on me right in the middle of his proposal to me, like literally as it was happening. Now, I was madly in love with this man. I was head over heels, would do whatever he said. If he said jump, I would say how high. At the time, we had been dating for about two years, maybe a little bit under two years. And the fact that he was even proposing was a shock to me because even though that I was madly in love with him, I didn't quite feel that we were ready for it. But one day, he just decided to surprise me, took me to Orlando for a little bit of fun at the amusement parks because, you know, I like to get down like that with some childish, lighthearted fun. So once we got to the amusement park, he decides to sign up to be a contestant on one of the competition games performances that they had at this theme park. So right before the show is about to start and he's about to start to 
compete, he hands me over his cell phone and says, babe, please film this. I want you to see what's going to happen. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. How much fun. Like this is my dream come true. Competition starts. There was like three or four events that he had to compete with others to win. And ultimately he won. But remember, I'm filming, right? And I'm filming from his cell phone that he told me to hold. So here I am with his little cell phone filming, all excited, all proud of my man he starts to receive text messages that are popping up on the screen. The text messages turned out to be from his mistress that he's been messing with the whole time we are together. And she's pissed. She's really pissed. I guess that morning he had texted her to let her know like, hey, it's over between us because I'm about to get engaged today. And she threw a shit fit, even though she herself was married. So at this point, my heart absolutely drops and like I want to vomit and I'm sitting here in a crowd with hundreds of people, maybe even thousands of people trying to keep my hands steady and filming what's happening as he's proposing and announcing it to this whole freaking stadium full of people. But I really know what's happening as I'm seeing these texts flash across the screen. Trauma. Deep breaths, Tiffany. Deep breaths. Now listen, I am not the type of girl that likes it when people see me sweat. I keep my cool. I just smile and I pretend that I'm the just most elated, happiest woman on the planet. So since this proposal has been blasted all over the big screen, that everyone around me is so excited for me, they're congratulating me and I'm just like in shock and awe. I somehow managed to keep my composure and to just walk outside of the stadium and wait for him outside. Once he shows up, he immediately gives me a huge hug, tells me that he loves me, and of course, does the proposal again to my face this time, not just on the big screen. There's so many people watching. Remember, we're in the middle of a theme park with thousands of people. So I quickly grab him and drag him into the nearest restaurant in the theme park that I could find. And I bring him over to the bar area and I sit him down and I tell him everything that I know. He didn't try to deny it, he knew that he was caught. And for the next 30 minutes, he proceeded to just tell me everything that he thought that I wanted to hear and I was just numb. The only words that I could manage to muster up at this point were, baby, this two carat diamond ring, it's just not going to be enough. I truly feared karma after I watched it destroy this girl's life right in front of me. At my old engineering job, there was this girl working at front desk. Let's call her Laura. And she came from somewhere else. Let's say Ireland. I was freshly graduated and we both started work around the same time. And when I met her, at first she was really nice. A couple months later, my work started hiring more fresh grads, more girls in particular that were younger, like my age. And she was only like five years older than me. I don't know when, how or why, but she started talking down on me for wearing makeup to work. Like one time I came into work late and I didn't have time to put on my eyelashes. So I was putting it on in the bathroom. Room, and she came in and was like I don't know why you try so hard like no one will ever take you seriously in this male dominated dominated industry if you care about looking pretty all the time she started to do this all the time even if I was just like simply checking my reflection and I'm not a confrontational person so I always just made it seem like I thought that she was joking and I was like haha I started to just like chalk it up as like our thing now where she just like makes fun of me all the time <laughs> and the longer she worked there the more everyone seemed to love her especially the male engineers who always talk so highly of her and I was like oh my god what's wrong with me like I'm so mean because like why do I not like this girl for some reason? <laughs> it wasn't until she announced that she was quitting because she was going back to Ireland that I found out what was really going on. <laughs> I was in the break room with one of my friends who's also a fresh grad and I was just trying to make conversation and was like, hey, did you hear about Laura leaving? That sucks. She was quiet for a bit and I just like watched her face like get all contorted and she was like, yeah, I don't like her. <laughs> I never told anyone about what Laura was doing to me because I didn't want to start work drama, especially since everyone loved her. And my friend was like, yeah, she's so rude to me. Like she ignores me so hard that it's embarrassing. Apparently my friend would just ask her like, you know, how's your day? How's your weekend? Or like just anything to make small talk. And like Laura would just like look at my friend straight in the eyes and just be like, and then just like continue doing her own thing. My other friend came into the break room as well, also a fresh grad, and she comes up to us and she's like, hey, what are you guys up to? My other friend was like, oh, we're talking about Laura. Like, you don't like her either, right? <laughs> and the friend that came in was like, oh my God. And then she proceeded to tell me that Laura always judges her outfits. Like she would always like analyze it and just kind of like look her up and down and be like, mm, and like make some sort of comment. It got so bad that my friend started taking the long way to go to the bathroom because she would have to pass Laura's desk at the front to get to the bathroom. So she started to go around just to avoid talking to Laura. Apparently she was doing this to all the new fresh female grads because she wanted to get with the male engineers and for some reason felt threatened by them anyway karma kicked in on the last week of her employment because she broke her arm from falling down the stairs she crashed her car and because she had to deal with all of that her visa expired what goes around comes around so my friends and i pitched in money to help cover the cost of like her broken arm her car her visa and whatever just to protect ourselves from karma 
I will never trust another pregnancy test again. The trauma is unreal. Basically, I had gotten off of birth control and this was only because I feel like I did not agree with my body at all. And my doctor said that because I was on the depot shot for so long that it would last my body for a long time and I would not get pregnant at least until I had like regular period. I was only in my second year of car, so I definitely did not want to get pregnant. I always knew I wanted a baby, but just not at that age. Like I thought I was gonna be closer to 30, honestly. So my now husband, but boyfriend at the time, we both had our own like separate townhouse apartment because of course we are still in college. Like we've been together for a while. So anyway, I had not had any regular periods. Fast forward a few months. I took a pregnancy test just to be sure. I didn't feel like any symptoms or anything, but I'm always like very in my head. And also, let me say this because people love to drag me and be like, girl, you definitely look pregnant. Like you are delusional. I took a picture the year before. I am definitely like very sensitive to gluten very like should be dairy free but i just don't care so i get really bloated and i would always joke like oh my gosh i always have such a big like food baby one day i had decided to take a pregnancy test just because it said clear as day not pregnant i'm like bad like i am not pregnant we're good we're clear fast forward a few months and i am at a party and i take a picture with one of my line sisters turn to the side you know like side by side picture go to look at the picture and immediately we look at each other and we're just like you look pregnant like I said before, you guys are like, well, duh, you're pregnant. Other times with pregnancy, especially your first, like you can just completely start showing out of nowhere. So I knew that the next day I had to take a test. So the next day I do go and take that test. And the first test was just lines and it didn't seem like I was pregnant. So I was like, okay, let's go back to the store and let's go get another one. Sure enough, clear as day, it says I'm pregnant. As soon as I see it, I start crying. Like there's no way that I am more than like six weeks pregnant because i had just taken a test so then i'm thinking okay i need to find a place that can give me a free ultrasound so i make an appointment at a place that says they give you free ultrasounds and i get there and not giving me that ultrasound they were like they can't give me an ultrasound until i am a confirmed eight weeks so i left that appointment crying like okay well where do we go from here so i ended up scheduling something that was in my hometown where we grew up my husband and i we grew up in the same city ultrasound tech said since i'm probably super early that i need to drink like a lot of water before i got there so once i got in there i sat down at the table she started the ultrasound and immediately she said okay you can go empty your bladder because the baby is big like i can see the baby clearly like what's big i lay back down on the table the fully developed baby was on that screen finally after some time before even saying how far along i was she was like oh did you guys want to know the gender today like that will always just like be in my mind like that is insane tear rolled down my cheek i'm like what like i didn't think you knew the gender of your baby until you were like really far along so then after some time goes on still not saying like exactly how far i am she was like you are 17 weeks and five days you're due on the 4th of july so that is why i will just never trust a pregnancy test again so stay safe out here and if you just took a negative pregnancy test do not trust it do you ever just think I can't make this shit up. I full on intended on making y'all some quality carbine content. Then shit got weird, and now I can't focus on anything but the weird shit. I'm just gonna air my grievances, and y'all just gonna have to hear about it. That's what you're getting from me. Let me tell you how I knew shit was gonna get funky. I went to the Walmart because I needed to get a rotisserie chicken that I could eat the breast out of. So every time I go to the Walmarts, I always grab a buggy on my way in so there's one less for the guys to get during the cart roundup. There wasn't very many buggies to be had, but there was one that was sticking out like a sore thumb. Because it's from the Dollar General. Now mind you, I reckon the nearest Dollar General is like two miles away. So we had to travel to get here. This is a Dollar General buggy. And this is a Walmart's buggy. Look. I'm all for no buggy left behind, but I can't very well be seen by loss prevention on video toting this bright ass yellow buggy. Knowing my luck, it would break the fucking internet, you know? So I find myself perplexed by how the Dollar General buggy got to the Walmarts. Time I had finally changed my thought process at the other end of the store. Sure enough, here comes two teenagers sprinting. It's one sitting in the Dollar General buggy and the other one high-stepping it with six-foot-long legs. Didn't even have time to process whether or not I was witnessing a crime before my brain squirreled to the Easter aisle where I found these tiny, cute little jars of Nutella for a dollar. I started scanning them at the self-checkout before I remembered that Burrito had just thrown away my two tiny jars of Nutella from like three Christmases ago. He had done that yesterday trying to hunt down a funky smell we couldn't sort out. 
Turns out I was fermenting a bag of potatoes in there trying to make some vodka or some shit. Anyhow, that mystery was debunked, but then, on my way to the house, I stopped by the mailbox just to check. Lucky me, the litter bug had been by. So not only is there trash all over the yard, hip hip fucking hooray, but something pink caught my eye right there in the middle of my driveway. Now I'm even more perplexed, so I lean in a little closer. And I'll be diddly damn if somebody ain't thrown an adult fun time toy in my damn driveway. I'm going to show you a picture of it in three, two, one. So I'm feeling so teetotally loco at this point that I not only text my husband to verify that he ain't lost nothing, but also did my own personal inventory as if that was even my jam. Got to looking around and the dumbass also threw out a piece of junk mail. So, Steve Finn, I got something for you.